lovely day and we're here at the track with this sinister beauty. It's the 2016 Audi S7. It's an executive sports sedan with four... Wait, what's happening here? Dude, are you seriously crashing my video right now? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, I saw it was a beautiful day out here. You've got the Audi S7. I brought a Tesla Model S 90D. 90D. So not only are you crashing my video with an electric car at the racetrack, but you didn't bring the P90D, the most powerful Tesla they make. Well, yeah, that one is definitely more powerful, more performance oriented, that's the P. But I feel this is better matched with your car. I mean, price wise, yours is 82,000 base, mine base is at 88,000, and we're both optioned up to about $95,000. Okay, so I don't know how that range is gonna help you on the racetrack today, but I will give you that they are pretty evenly matched on price and design now that I look at it, and probably performance, actually. Uh, I've got the uh, four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine that gets me 450 horsepower, and that's gonna go through a seven speed DSG on its way to Audi's Sport Quattro system. Uh, with 406 pound feet of torque, my zero to 60 time is four and a half seconds. What have you got? Well, that's a really good engine. I really like that. I actually have two electric motors, one on each axle, so I've got all wheel drive, each of those motors is 259 horsepower, and that somehow adds up to 417 horsepower. I don't know how that math is done, uh, but it also adds up to 485 pound-feet of torque. And I've got the 90 kilowatt hour battery here. Uh, Tesla says that gets this car to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds. That's Ooh. faster than your car. It's gonna be close. And it looks like you've got me beat significantly on torque, but I've got you beat on horsepower. So it looks like we've got a battle of torque versus horsepower, newfangled electricity versus good old fashioned turbocharged gasoline. You want to put them head to head? Yeah, yeah, let's do a drag race. Oh, we get the whole track today, right? So why waste it? Let's do some uh, circuit handling because I think that this Audi is going to show that Tesla a few tricks. Mm, okay, but we'll do the drag race next, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll get around to it if you've got some range left at the end. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the Audi now, and one of the first things that you're going to notice is something you can't get in that Tesla of yours, and that's this excellent V8 engine note. I mean, listen to that. That's a good roar. That's a nice growl. It just underpins the whole thing, and when you let it off, you hear that backfiring. That's pretty cool. Yeah, really good acceleration, snappy performance from the DSG, and we've also got a lighter car here than the Tesla. We've got batteries to carry around, so the Audi feels a lot more nimble around these tight turns. Yeah, but I'm also feeling some weird body stuff. It feels kind of soft, and there's definitely some body motion in these uh, corners. Yeah, well, a little body roll is good, uh, but that's mostly because we're on Audi's air suspension, and that's going to have dynamic and, and uh, comfort settings. Right now, we're in dynamic, and it doesn't do a great job of mitigating roll, but it does a pretty good job of making sure we've got grip where we need it. And fortunately, we've got Audi's torque vectoring system on the Sport Quattro to really help us rotate in these turns and make this big old car feel really dynamic. Yeah, I've been feeling that. That really just rotates the car on the corners because it overpowers that outside rear wheel. So, yeah, that helps you around the corners really nicely. Yeah, the Audi's a more involved vehicle. You got really good seat of the pants feel. There's a lot happening around you, but you feel really connected to the road, I think, which is, again, surprising because this is a really big vehicle. Okay, you know, I'm pretty well convinced by this car's handling character. So let's see what your electric toy can do now. <laughs> Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. That's right, that's the sound of electrons. That's the sound of the future. That's the sound of the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack driving these twin electric motors. And that's the sound of wheels spinning around these corners. Yeah, we're not for the wheel spin. The future would be sounding pretty boring right now. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, in this handling test, I'm having more fun than I thought I'd have. Oh yeah, you're really taking these corners a <laughs> lot better than I thought it would do. Yeah. <laughs> Almost lost it there. Yeah, it, you know, there's some understeer, but uh, this has an air suspension and it's really holding this car nice and stable in the corners. I mean, just a lot better than I thought it would. 
Yeah, but you don't have the same sort of like torque vectory rotation that you can kind of feel when the Audi's on the edge. That's true. I mean, this does have the all-wheel drive, but it doesn't have that sort of pro level of cornering ability that this does. And we'll find that out on this really tight corner here. Oh, get some good wheel spin and not a lot of thrust off the back of that uh, turn. One thing I'm going to say that I am kind of liking from the passenger seat, though, is the sort of immediacy of the electric engine. There's no waiting for the gears to shift, even because <laughs> it's just power immediately. Yeah. yeah, it is a very efficient drivetrain. It just puts that power directly to the wheels. So this car is pretty good on the handling. It's got its, you know, it's got good chops. Uh, it was better than last seven, maybe not quite. So that was fun. Yeah, I guess we can say that the Audi handily wins the handling contest, right? <laughs> yeah, it is definitely the better handling car, although the Model S did pretty well. We gotta give it some credit there. <laughs> uh, so drag race now, right? Well, before we get to that, uh, neither one of these are race cars. They're luxury sedans. So let's see how they do in the real world. What sort of creature comforts we have before you waste the rest of your battery <laughs> on it. Yeah, okay, this one is pretty good. On public roads here, I gotta point out a couple things that are innovative about this car. One is the infotainment. We've got this massive touchscreen here, 17 inch portrait style, and it reacts quickly. This car is connected. It's got a built in uh, 3G connection, I believe it is. Well, it's good. I see an LTE logo. Wow, that's crazy. Oh. And that's a big old screen, man. That's a lot of pixels. I mean, what, am I, what, what do you even need that much screen for? <laughs> well, for navigation, for one, we can, we're looking at uh, Google Maps here showing satellite imagery. Uh, really beautiful, see exactly where we are. You can also switch around different screens here. I can push for audio. I get to see my audio sources. Uh, I can look at uh, energy consumption. I can even look at a full-on web browser here. Just tap this twice and... Oh, I guess you got in this car before me. Yep, that's definitely my Instagram feed, and that is the <laughs> Audi's massive grill. Okay, okay, we'll leave it. Okay, there's one more thing I gotta show you about this car that's really cool. They call it autopilot. So they built in a lot of sensors around this car. If I just wanna cruise down the road. So, how's it going? All right, so you're showing off, and <laughs> I'm Instagramming right now. Who's, who's driving the car right now? Yeah, answer it's kind of driving itself. It does a good job of keeping itself in the lane. In fact, if I'm on a multi-lane road, I can just uh, switch, hit the uh, turn signal, and it'll change lanes by itself. Uh, uh, this is really leading up to the self-driving car of the future. They're yeah. really being aggressive. So the this. Tesla is so boring, you don't even want to drive it. Let <laughs> me show you what a rear driver's car is like, and we'll hop in the Audi next. So now that we're not on the track, I'm going to go ahead and put the Audi into its comfort mode. I've got different modes here, four of them, one of which is customizable, and that allows me to manually sort of put the car into a more relaxed mode when I want to just cruise and chat. And that means that the car doesn't really need to guess what I'm trying to do. It can actually just deliver the best driving experience for me. I like that. Well, yeah, in comfort mode, this does feel almost as comfortable as the Model S just on public roads. It is a little bit louder though. We've got meteor tires and there is that engine sort of uh, droning away up front. Uh, but another thing that you were just sort of bragging about is uh, Google Earth integration. Well, I've got Google Earth right here in the dashboard as well. I'll push this button and it shows up right here on the system. And I can also show that map in my instrument cluster. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of the functions that are infotainment functions can be uh, shown right here in the instrument cluster. So I never really need to take my hands off of the steering wheel to do things like choose the song or uh, initiate a phone call. Uh, you know, I also got to come in. I like this carbon fiber trim in this car. I guess that's the Sport S7 thing. Yeah, and, and on the whole, the Audi has 
better material than its cabin. It seems more like a premium, like a luxury sedan as opposed to the Tesla, which is very sleek and futuristic. The materials in this car just make it seem more put together. Another thing that I kind of want to concede is that I don't have nearly as cool of autonomous driving features as you do. I've got things like adaptive cruise and lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, but nowhere near as autopilot-y as what we saw in the Tesla. So I'm gonna have to give you that point as well. Okay, so just for like on the road, an everyday car, where do we land? I'm leaning Model S. I'm actually also leaning Model S. That car is a lot quieter, which makes it a little bit easier to live with and you've got more G with features and the Tesla also gets updated by software whereas with the Audi this car is getting a little old. All right so uh, drag race now right? All right yeah. finally beat me down uh, let's get around to that drag race and uh, let's see which one of these cars is faster in a straight line. Okay. my best to win this. I can't believe you won that drag race. How did you do that? Well, the Audi has a launch control feature, something the non-P Tesla Model S over here does not have. So I was able to get off the lines a little bit quicker than you. I've got to admit, I was hanging on to the drag race to the end because I thought I was going to lose. Yeah, well, we do have to come to a conclusion which car we like the best. So where do we stand on that? So we both agree that the Audi is the more dynamic handling car, and we both saw that it wins the drag race. But I've got to admit that the Tesla's quieter, and I think I'd rather be in it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's more future-proof. Yeah, and for some people, the electric drivetrain is going to be the deciding factor. But I know we both like to drive fast. We both like a good handling car. So I'm leaning Audi S7. Right, got to pick a winner today. So two out of three, we're going to have to give it the Audi. So that's it. Today's winner of the CNET Roadshow shootout is the 2016 Audi S7.